Whilst never aiming to be a professional artist, 10 years ago, proofreader Lorraine Lewitz started a side project, creating a miniature artwork every day for a year. Titled 365 Paintings for Ants, it met with huge success and demand, making an unforgettable set of artworks and an unintended international career. Welcome to my home studio. Come on in. So this used to be a really dingy little garage and I, over the past two years, have kind of renovated in two different phases. And at the moment I'm working on giant miniatures. Sometime during lockdown in 2022, my son and I made it to a toy store and we discovered this bag of marbles and rediscovering the magic of marbles with my son, you know, it was a huge nostalgic moment for me, but also this whole new experience for him. He was only four years old and he was so excited about them and we were actually kind of fighting about which one was, you know, going to belong to who. And that's how I decided that that would be the subject matter for my new project. I just felt really drawn to them. I guess this is just a different way of kind of celebrating detail, which has always been the central focus of my work, you know, elevating small details on a big scale, or big details on a small scale. It's all about kind of zooming in, taking in that moment to really focus on something that you wouldn't normally see. Lorraine has just finished her 1000th miniature painting since she first started in 2013. This is my fourth book and it contains 100 paintings by ants painted in 2015 and 2016. So after the two years of daily consecutive paintings, which I also had put into books, I decided to make a little collection of these. And this is the first time I did a miniature coffee table book. This was actually the first book where we decided to incorporate these perspective photos. And basically I started putting objects on top of the paintings and then taking a photograph of the actual painting so that people scrolling through their phone on Instagram could see the actual scale of the piece and not just wonder what size it is. Painting on the tiniest canvases, the artist chooses to ground herself in the great outdoors. So because my studio is at home and I work from home and kind of everything happens in the same space, I often need to just break out of that cycle and have a boundary between home life and work life. And the forest just acts as a really good cushion in between those two worlds. So I often come here seeking for inspiration. If I haven't found something I feel drawn to, which it can come from anywhere, it can come from the internet, it can come from magazines, stories someone told me, or just something in my garden. But if something hasn't resonated with me, I often find that I just have to kind of break out of that like normal loop and get out into the forest and start looking. I love this time of year in the forest because the heat combined with the rain makes mushrooms pop up everywhere. So you can literally look in any corner and you'll find little mushrooms like right over here. I've gone on two mushroom foraging courses, but I still can't tell you what's poisonous and what's not. Um, but I think this would make a brilliant painting because it's got that beautiful texture of the lines going down and the gradient of color. And I also think that shape would cast a really nice shadow. So it would have that three dimensional quality. What I love about the forest is that you can literally stop anywhere and crouch down and you'll find magic and beauty all around. Like, look at this. This is exactly the kind of thing that I would paint. It's got detail, texture, beautiful color, and it also would fit perfectly into kind of a spherical space, which is where I paint. I've just found that the forest has a way of centering me. It's almost like a meditation when I'm walking in the forest for 45 minutes. It's just got such a calming effect. It's quiet, it's beautiful, it's like the sounds of nature. And I always think about the Japanese term shirinjoku, which is like quiet forest walking. And apparently in some countries you get a reduction on your medical aid if you walk in the forest every day. So <laughs> it's just really wonderful. As she prepares to establish a mini museum in New York, Miss Lutz invited us behind the scenes on her process. These are some of the objects I found in the forest this morning, and now I need to decide which one to paint. So today we're gonna to go for the leaf. The first step is to photograph the leaf, because I tend to work from photographs and not from life. 
and I've just propped it up with a little piece of press stick to allow me to get a little bit of a shadow and added some water to add some shine and now I'm trying to find the right angle that'll give me some detail to work with. I start out by finding the center of the page and deciding on a circumference for the object and just whatever feels right within kind of three centimeters. And then I've sketched out a very rough outline and I will now keep the circle just for a little while until everything's been placed and then I will erase it. And so now I start painting. I think one of the most common misconceptions about my work is that people think I work with a magnifying glass, but I, I tried that once and it was so disruptive that I actually never painted with a magnifying glass again. So maybe one day when my age starts deteriorating my eyes and I need it, then I will. But for the time being, no, I don't. I chose watercolor as my medium, even though I was more comfortable with oil because watercolor dries so quickly. So because I was doing one every single day, I had to know that it was gonna dry fast enough to be done within an hour. So while I still prefer oil, I'm working with watercolor to this day. I am very easily overwhelmed and the world can be a lot for me. So I think those moments where I get to sit down and zoom in and narrow, focus on this small little area and just channel my perfectionism into that tiny little circle is like therapy for me. I struggle to meditate or switch off and this just helps me to really like still my mind and channel a feeling into something tangible. When Lorraine felt disillusioned with art at university, her future husband, Mark de Menzies, encouraged her to start again. Now their son is showing promise. Felix actually said the other day while we were painting, I think one of us made a mistake and he said, don't worry, there are no mistakes, only shapes. And I think that's a really good way of summarizing the kind of approach that we take when we're painting together is just to let loose and not worry about the outcome or the process or anything really and just have fun. A painting that's actually of particular importance to me is from 2013. It's a photo of me standing on a beach in Thailand when we were on holiday and it's actually the moment that I, I wanted to ask Lorraine to marry me. So yeah, it's very, very special to us and it's yeah, the 1st of May 2013 of the day. I think everyone has it in them to be an artist and I think Felix can do whatever he feels drawn to. Guys. Can you colour inside of that for me? I think he might be a director, rather. Um, <laughs> he has a very strong vision of what he Ooh. he likes and this what he wants in to see galaxy. in the world. But yeah, if he wants to become an artist, I would encourage that. To aspiring artists, Lorraine Lurt says put your work out there. Instead of perfection, seek a conversation with your viewers and your audience will find you.